welcome to my latest video. I got up quite late today, not until about 8.30. It's really easy to get cozy in bed when the weather is like this. So I'm out here to check to see if this thing is uh, water resistant in any way. And the answer is no, it is certainly not. Uh, you can see there's leaks everywhere. And that's fine. It's mainly meant as sort of a sunshade. So perhaps I'll string up a tarp and make a portion of it at least uh, a place where I can come and work in the rain. But for now, I'm going to have to move anything I want to do inside and go into the cramped uh, tiny house space and, and work from there. So let's get back inside and get out of this rainy but very wonderful uh, and much needed weather and have a coffee and think about starting work. What do you think of this weather? Mm -hmm. Come inside and be cozy with me. Come on. Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Come on, Mikey. Come on. Let's go inside. So, um, everything I do in here for the next little while, uh, for this week, is going to be pushing towards more storage. So finishing this wall will allow me then to just kind of forget about it for a while, and I can put, put some storagey things in here, put some plastic bins that I never use and just forget about them for now. I have all this wood here as well. So this wood is all for the corner kitchen cabinet. And the corner kitchen cabinet is over here in this dark and shadowy corner. Okay, so first things I wanna do are drill a hole in the wall, somewhere around the same height as this, so I can get this gas bottle outside and create a bunch of space. That's probably priority number one. Given that it's raining outside, it makes things a little bit more complicated. And then this is the base for the kitchen corner cabinet. Uh, the wood I just showed you is going to be built onto this and come up to about here. So building this will give me a whole bunch more storage, uh, so that is definitely a priority. And then coming back over to the wood, I have this long piece here, which will be used to build up this side of this corner cabinet and create a space across there. And then Eventually, and possibly sooner than I think, I'll put a little roof over top of it, um, which will give me another place to store things. So these are all seemingly small jobs, but the rain is going to complicate matters, I think, and it could take a lot longer than I expect. I'm going to start with drilling this hole. I'd like to drill the hole and get the gas bottle outside, which is going to create a whole bunch more space for me, so it'll be easier to work on the kitchen cabinet in the corner. Okay, so here's the gas. This will be outside. This pipe will be going somehow through the wall. I'd love for this to just kind of go straight out the hole, if I can get the hole really accurate. Um, the stove will be moved over here, and so the hole should be somewhere somewhere around here. So I'm going to take get my chisel, take this off, and see what lurks beneath. So some of you out there will be happy to see that I've got the right chisels for the job. So I'm going to whack away at this uh, lime render and see what's happening underneath. Okay, so this is going to be annoying. Um, this looks like it's just some enormous rock. So going through the mortar at that height might not be possible unless I kind of went through up here. It's a little higher. Um, let me chip this out and see what's happening there. So I'm going to start drilling and, uh, as always, hope for the best. So this bad boy here is what's called an SDS drill and basically it's corded so it'll be more powerful than one that runs by battery and it's also a lot more powerful than the, the small drill that I have. So these are beasts and it's the kind of thing you need when you're drilling into granite because it's extremely hard. So I'm going to start with this small bit. I think it's a... Eight millimeter? 
10 millimeter. Anyway, it's much smaller than the other one and it'll give me a good starting hole and then I'll switch over to the bigger one after that. Somewhere around here and if I can get this little rock out that could give me a nice start. So I might get my smaller chisel and try to just work this guy out and then it'll give me a lot of flexibility with where I actually drill. It looks like there's more stone behind there, but at least I have my kind of perfect location to start drilling. So I'll get the drill in and then, uh, yeah, see what happens. So there's a bunch of settings on these things. Um, to go through the stone, I'm going to want the hammer action and the drilling action at the same time for extra power. So that seems like it's that setting. And I should probably plug it in. All right, let's do this. Okay, so thankfully it found uh, a big gap and that was incredibly easy. So I'm gonna put the long drill bit on and see how far that will take me through the wall. It's basically been really easy. It's probably mostly just gravel in the wall once I got past this little rock because I found a space. So I don't know what's happening on the other side. It could be a matter of drilling through some solid granite, but it's only gonna be about 10 centimeters or so. So I'm just gonna push through and um, see what happens. And nothing happened. Uh, <laughs> I might have been lucky and found a space on the other side, so. Okay, let's go see if we can see this thing sticking out the other side of the wall. If I can, that would be amazing news. And it stopped raining. Oh no, it's still raining. I'll take it back. Okay, this is amazing news. The um, drill bit has poked right through the space that I measured and uh, I didn't have to drill through any massive granite, which is great. Uh, the problem is this space here isn't gonna be big enough for the conduit that I want, the plastic tubing. So I might have to chip some of the rock away here, um, which I'll, I guess I'll work on now. And hopefully with a little bit of wiggling and uh, whacking and stuff like that, maybe I can make the space big enough for the tube. So this is the tube I want, um, which is quite thick really. So it's gonna be the perfect length to get through the wall and then some, but it's pretty thick. It's a little thicker than it needs to be. I can pick up a more narrow tube if I need to, um, but the idea would be putting this through that hole I just drilled. And as you can see, you know, there's not enough space because this drill bit is quite a bit smaller than the tube. But I wonder if I can get my rock bar and make the hole bigger. First, I'm gonna chip away some of this rock here because that's definitely gonna be in the way. And then I'm gonna get the massive iron bar and with brute force, I'm gonna try to make the hole a lot bigger. Okay, so the hole, at least on this side of the wall, is big enough for this. There's usually a whole bunch of gravelly stuff in between the wall and then rocks on the other side, but I have holes on both sides that I think are big enough for this, and so I just need to kind of push my way through the gravelly stuff, and I have just the tool for the job. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, this thing here is called a rock bar. Well, it's actually called a bunch of different things. Iron bar, I think. I call it a rock bar and other names that I forget. It's got this sort of levery end and it's got this pointy end and it's very heavy. <laughs> um, and it's probably one of the most useful tools you can, you can have. Um, with two of these things and one or two people, you can move rocks, huge rocks, um, really far just by using levering motions. 
Um, and it's just good for uh, breaking things up and it's great for digging holes and it's hopefully good for poking my way through a wall. So my plan right now is to stick this pointy end into the hole I just made um, and basically whack it with a sledgehammer um, or maybe with a small hammer to start and see how far it goes in. And if I can get this thing through all or most of the way, this will give me a big enough hole, I think, for that uh, gray piping that I want to put through it. So I have a feeling that because this rock here uh, is in the way, I won't be able to get it on the correct angle. It'll be kind of more this way, which I don't think is what I want. Um, so what I'm going to do is get the drill bit and I'm going to stick that through and see what angle it comes through at and then that'll tell me which angle I need and that'll tell me whether I need to chip off more of this stuff. Yeah, so I need to take off quite a bit more here and then hopefully I can get this rock bar through on the same angle as this guy. So I think the angle is right-ish. I think it's good enough and I'm going to put the bar in, give it a whack and see where it ends up. Uh, obviously if I face a lot of resistance on the interior of the wall, I shall cease whacking and uh, investigate. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So it's going in without too much resistance. Um, just with this little hammer. This is only a one kilo hammer and I'm not really giving it too much force. It is on a concerningly upward angle, so hopefully it pops out in roughly the same spot as it, as the drill bit went in. Once I hit any kind of resistance, I'll probably stop and investigate further because I don't want to hit the back of a giant rock on the other side and then just pop the whole thing out. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep going and hopefully I find all the nooks and crannies along the way. I'm not sure I like that. That seems like it's um, resisting quite a bit. So I'm going to go see what's happening on the other side of the wall. Um, and hopefully I can get this out if I need to. <laughs> uh, I might have gone too far, but um, where there's a well, there's a way. So let's see what's happening on the other side and hopefully it's all good things. It's good things. Uh, the lighting in here is awful. Sorry about that, but I don't know if you can see the pointy end is just right here. Um, and yeah, it's made its way through mostly in the spot I was expecting. So what I'll do probably is chip off this front of the, the rock, give it a more clear path to come through. And then ladies and gentlemen, I have my hole. So this is all looking very positive. Let's go see what's happening on the other side, how far it's gone through the wall. Okay, so this right here is one hell of a hole. Bye. Okay, that was surprisingly easy, but let's see if I can get this thing through there. Amazing. Okay. Job mostly done. I'll saw this off eventually. But for now, all of the messy work is done. I can clean up all this crap that's on the floor. And then I can start working on this corner. So I'm really, really happy about this morning of work. And very excited to get on with that. corner is to screw these pieces down to the ground so I can then put the bottom platform piece on and then the uprights. These pieces are ready to go but I still need to prepare the other pieces so I still need to do some sanding and some linseed oiling before the whole thing is ready to be assembled. 
So I'll do that now uh, while there's a break in the weather and get everything ready to go. I'll linseed oil everything and give that a day to dry. So I probably won't install any of this until tomorrow, but if I can get all the pieces ready today, I will be very, very happy. So one thing I'll never truly understand is why these things are painted. Um, maybe they're not meant to be used as uh, wood horses. Maybe it's like scaffolding support or something like that, but the green stuff gets on the wood. And if you're working on like the interior of a frame or something, it doesn't matter. But if you're making something that's going to face the world, getting green paint off later on is very annoying. So previously I'd had cardboard on them, but that just disintegrated in the rain. So I'm going to just tie pieces of wood on so that the wood that I'm using rests on top and no green comes in contact with the wood and then I don't have to sand off greenness later on. So I'll put these in place and then I can get to work. So it's just a very simple, quick, temporary solution, but hopefully it keeps my, my wood from turning green. Well, crap, I left my sanding discs out in the rain uh, and I don't know if now they're ruined. That's annoying. I definitely can't use them now, so I'm gonna, I guess, just leave them out and see if they dry. I do have a few packs left inside that I recently bought, but they're quite um, low grit, which means they won't take the sanding to a very fine level. It's kind of what you use to start off sanding. So if you have a very rough piece of timber, you would use 40 grit, and I think I've got from like 40 to 120. So the 120 might do what I need, so I'll Go get some of those sanding pads, stick them on, and hopefully I can push forward with the job. But if I've ruined all of these things, ugh, that will be so disappointing. Oh well, don't leave your sanding pads outside in the rain. All right, I've got, I think, two, two of these packages, um, and they go up to 120 grit, which I think will do the job. So... <laughs> All is not completely lost. I can keep going on this job until I run out of sanding pads. And lesson learned for the next time. Okay, I've done some sanding. This is just going to be the inside of a cabinet, so it's probably going to get destroyed anyways. And I've discovered I've got that little screw poking through. Mistake, but it adds character. Anyway, I've sanded it. And I don't know if you can see, but there's some gaps where you can kind of see daylight through. Not that big of a deal. Like I said, this is just the interior bottom of a cabinet. But it would be nice to seal these up so that, I don't know, weird things don't fall in there or, you know, it's just good. Just good to have a smooth surface. So. I've seen this trick before where you, you put some wood glue in the crack and then you rub sawdust into it and that's supposed to kind of fill it in. And then after you do that, and I guess it dries for a bit, you sand it again. So I'm going to try that and see how it comes out. Something about this doesn't seem <laughs> right, but I guess all will be revealed once I sand it off, so let's just keep going, see what happens.
So I've got some gluey fingers. And I guess I'll sand this and see what happens. I've just woken up from a little siesta and look at how gorgeous it is out here right now. It's absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining, temperature is perfect, the clouds are puffy, I'm well rested, and I'm going to do just a little bit more work on the sanding stuff. Um, I think we're due a little bit more rain in a couple of hours, and then that should be it for the next week or two. So I've enjoyed the rain while it's lasted, um, and now it's time to enjoy the sun again and much cooler temperatures. So. This is what we love about Portugal. This is the type of temperature and the type of weather that we like. Summer, boo. Winter, meh, it's okay. But this stuff on the cusp of the autumn and spring, it's a really perfect temperature. You get a lot of sunshine and you get a lot of beautiful days like this. And you get a lot of happy people. So, and happy gardens because of the rain. So yeah, a wonderful thing to wake up to after my little siesta. And now it's time to get back to work. Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Hmm? Okay, let's give it a sand and see what happens. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I definitely feel like I've seen this done to better effect on videos on the internet. However, it's filled the holes and that's good enough for me. So I think I'm going to linseed oil this guy um, and let it dry so that tomorrow perhaps I can think about putting it in place. You know what? I've actually changed my mind. I'm not going to linseed oil it now because A, it might rain tonight or tomorrow and I don't really want to bring this in the house lest it stink the place out and B I'm tired I don't want to work anymore I'm going to make a snack and I'm probably gonna to listen to some podcasts and just putter around the house tidy up maybe maybe do some video editing something like that I've got a lot of video to edit from today and that takes a lot of time so I'm gonna call it on the work for today on the actual building stuff and and I'm gonna move to the computer work. Good morning from a new day. Um, it's crazy windy outside today, but it is dry. I have lots to do today because this evening is Shokalyosh, and that's basically the best night of the year here in uh, this area. Uh, it's a festa in Alpadrinha, which is a village near to me. It's three days, but Saturday night is the party night, and it's a lot of fun. So Sunday will absolutely be a write-off, but I'm gonna try to get as much work as I can done today. Uh, and then, yeah, take it easy for the rest of the weekend and enjoy an evening of fun and frolic uh, later on tonight. So it's super windy out here. I won't be doing much talking into the camera from outside. Anytime I have something to say, I'll go duck into the house. But these things look like they're drying. Will they stick to the sander? I'm not sure, but I'll give them a try later on. Sanding is finished. Through the magic of editing, it seems like that didn't take very long at all. But it was at least a two hour job to get everything smooth and sanded. And now it's time to linseed oil.
linseed oil, first coat, finished. I'm gonna give it two more coats. I'll let it dry a little bit, do another one later on today before I go out, and then another one probably tomorrow whenever I recover from going out tonight. I'm gonna say goodbye for now from this video, but don't leave because after this, we're gonna finish the video off with the sights and sounds of Shikalyosh. Later on, I probably won't be quite as coherent as I am now, so I'm gonna say goodbye now. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment if you really liked it. There's a super thanks button down there somewhere. Um, always appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video, but I'll see you at Shikalyosh first. All right, let's go to Shikalyosh. He's excited! <laughs> Yay! Portugal from the scratch. What are you doing? <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> no way. You haven't got this at home. You're good. You're, you're doing. You're doing really well. <laughs> Look at that face. Just look at it. You have to stop the swinging. Yeah, you need to lean back a bit. Thanks, Bella. Push your head back. Make your lips bigger. <laughs> Make it lower then. You have the power. You need to 
Tip it more, tip it more. Tip it more.